Hey, it's Darno with D-Grill. So I got my new rotisserie and I'm going to start getting it set up. So I want to walk you through the process step by step so that you'll be able to do it yourself and see how easy or hard it is. So let's get started. So to get started, we've got our uh, manual. Well, I've had an unboxing video in an earlier video, so if you just wanted to see parts, I did an earlier unboxing. But when we get into the uh, first steps here, um, I wanted to show you in the manual, just for anyone who would be referring to the manual at all, that they've got some uh, symbols up here. They've got, like, they show the parts, and then they've got these symbols here. These symbols are for the number of burners on your grill. Hoping you can see that, but if you have two or three burner, or you have four burners, six burners, they're just showing some things. There'll be some steps that'll be different depending on the number of burners you have on your grill. So, the very first step is pretty easy. We just take the plastic coating, blue plastic coating off of this part here. So, just going to get that undone. And that's outside and inside of this uh, holder here. There's some blue plastic stuff, protective coating that has to be removed. It's harder getting it off inside than outside, but hey, this is probably the easiest step of all, right? All right, now that I've got that off, there are different holes here. You're only going to use two of these holes depending on your grill. If you've got the original Weber Genesis or Genesis 1, you'll be using the top two holes. If you have a Genesis 2 or a 2LX, you'll be using the bottom two holes. And so, I'm going to get the uh, nuts and bolts here. Just going to get those unpackaged. Thank God, none dropped to the ground. So I'm going to take this and I need to put it right here and get it, uh, there's two holes here, right there, and I need to get it, uh, get the bolts through those two holes. Okay, so let's just say if you have big hands, be careful trying to get those nuts uh, in here, but I've got them in now. And I uh, tightened the bolt inside here, two bolts. All right, for this next part, it's where it gets to the area where it depends on if you have a 200, or 300, or 400 grill, or 600 grill. My rotisserie is only made for the 300 and 200 series grills, so I can only show you for those. But the instructions, I think, gives a clear enough picture for us to understand what to do with uh, any of the sizes this rotisserie is made for, whether you have a two, three, four, or six hundred grill. So uh, this next step, step two, is where it uh, gets kind of uh, differentiates between grills. If you have a two or four, there's this bar here. Well, this is the long bar, actually. They don't tell you this is the long bar, I believe. And that's a counterweight. There's this uh, other midsection bar they don't want you to use if you have a two or 400 grill. But if you have a three or 600 grill, then they want you to use the middle bar that comes with it. So I wanted to show you those. It'll probably be easier to show you the actual pieces. I think the manual gets a little confusing, at least for me at that point. So <clears throat> this long bar, this is the long rotisserie stick here. And the white thing on the end here, this is the uh, sharp piece. So remember the one with the little white tip is your sharp piece you want to be careful with. The little black things are just screw tips. So I'm just going to take the screw tip off this one. This one's also a screw tip. I'll take this one off. And I'm just going to set those aside real quick. Now, if you have a 200 grill, you're not going to, or I think I believe a 400 grill, making sure I check the manual for accuracy. Yeah, if you have a 2 or a 4, they're not recommending that you use this piece here, which is kind of a middle piece. 
and it already has this little piece if you have a 300 <coughs> series you're gonna use this and you're gonna three or six you're gonna use this and it's already got this piece attached on there screwed in oops get that screwed back in right but it already has this screwed in although in the manual it looks like it might be a separate piece it's already it is it's already screwed in when it comes out the box so what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna take oops, drop my camera wait. sorry for the dropsies but uh, this is a long pole this is our middle bar. If you have, remember, if you have the three or four, you're probably not going to use it. I mean, if you have the two, if you have the two or the four, you're probably not going to use this. But if you have a three or six, you are. I'm just going to take this this way. You have to turn that way to tighten. So get that tightened on there. So I've got it all tightened there. Now I'm going to take my counterweight, tighten that on the end here. If you have a 2 or a 4 that didn't use this middle bar, you just put your counterweight right there where this other intersection piece is instead of using the intersection piece. So, let's try and get this screwed. Everything screws this way. Everything is really like lefty tidy with this thing. Instead of righty tidy, it's lefty tidy. So remember that. Now I've got this whole bolt all pulled pull together. Now I'm going to show you the next step. Okay, for our next step, I have taken the uh, cover off of the shut part of the rod. Still got my fully assembled rod together here. And I'm just going to set it here for a moment. I need to take the motor and get that uh, put in place. The motor, I'm going to the rod back a little bit. The motor slides on right here. Here's my motor. I'm going to show you uh, how it looks from the other side. Just going to turn that around. Just going to slide that right on this end here. Just like that. So you can see how my motor looks over here got the on button uh, facing the top so I'm going to take my rotisserie pointer part and stick that in there and again. And stick that right in the hole and this is just an example with our food and just slide it in there now <coughs> You want to take, um, when you got your food, you want to take the, these uh, here, you want to take them, the spit forks, you want to take those and slide them onto your rod. So, I'm just going to take one for an example, I'll show you in a sec. Alright, I will say, it's best to get the food on the rods on the rod and in the spits in the house. You know, you don't want to try and be doing this at the grill over fire. So, thank you, Bird. Uh, <coughs> so I've got the first round of this, this here, and you would basically take and stick it through your chicken or whatever and lock it in there. Then you would take your second one, and you could take it, and uh, I'll show this when I do some food. that in there and you can lock your food in and you have to tighten these tighteners down so let me get those tightened and I'll bring you right back in a sec all right so I'm taking this make sure I put it back onto the motor there get the other side you want to make sure that you have a uh, the other side has an open space that you're sliding into. You don't want to be sliding a square part over here. You don't want to have any of the square part over here. You want the round, rounded parts, of course, and your, uh, your notches of your rotisserie. You want the rounded parts in the notches there. Now, after you get all this set up, and let's imagine you've got your ribs or your chicken or whatever, 
sitting there. You want to get things hooked up to power. So I've got my power cord here. Okay, I've got my power hooked in here now. And uh, I'm going to turn it on. You just hit the, you know, the zero is off and one or up is on. It's like open circuit, closed circuit. So I turn that on. You hit a rotisserie starting to go. And it rotates very slowly. But nothing's spinning. So I didn't get it in. I didn't get the rod in very well. So let me, let me get that adjusted a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to get my uh, rod just adjusted a little. Make sure it's well in there. So I had it in, but I didn't have it in the notch real good. You've got to make sure you get it into the square notch in the hole. So make sure I get that pointy part in the square notch in the hole. Make sure all my circular parts are lining up there. Slide that in. Now let's turn it on. Now you see things are spinning. And you don't have much space at all. I mean, you have a, a frighteningly low amount of space to work with. I mean, look at the little bit of space I've got for your food to spin. I mean, you not going to get much there you're going to get like a chicken you're going to get like maybe some ribs you put in the middle you're not getting a turkey under there i don't think so i mean it's going to have to be a small turkey you can get some game hens in there but that's about it this is a 300 grill and uh i don't know about with the 600 but i'm imagining it's probably similar but basically the rotisserie is good but you're only going to be able to do small foods on it you know don't get a rotisserie thinking that you're going to get like a big turkey or something on there because that uh, may not work out. I mean, although it can hold 20 pounds, I mean, if you try to put a 15 pound turkey on there, about depending on how you know wide a turkey is, 15 pounds, probably not going to work out well. And you still want to be able to put uh, some drip pans down under here. I'm going to show you some more steps here in a moment. Okay, um, still got it going just for example. One other thing you need to do is get this uh, warming rack down. Put that warming rack down so you have yourself more room and nothing's getting bumped. I just want to show you with different size drip pans how things look. If you want some drip pans underneath your food to help uh, get that uh, moisture flying back up, warmed and heated and going back up into your food instead of just going down into the grill. This is with two of the smaller roasting pans. So uh, let me get the exact side dimensions of that for you real quick. All right, uh, <clears throat> these are the smaller pans. These are the five inch by seven and a half inch. They're one and a, one and a fourth inch, uh, one point four inch actually deep that I'm using here as an example. So if you got some food, you know, on there and you're cooking and it's dripping down, you're going to have a little bit of clearance there. If you use um, a larger pan, a larger drip pan, I've got some larger ones here. You know, I just want you to see this. If you see here, it points where this point's coming down, where the spit's coming down. If you had food on there, it's going to be touching and hitting the pan. This is a, uh, got these from over at Walmart. These are 11.75 inch by 9.25 inch, and they're 2.5 inch deep. So, a little over, like maybe 1.1 inch deeper, and you're pretty much touching your food there. Unless you position the pan kind of in the center there. If you position it in the center, and you keep all your food in the center, that can work out nice. So you really just got to, depending on the drip pan you choose to use, the size, the size of your food, you're going to have to make sure that you coordinate things accordingly there. Alright, so here's how things look with a very large drip pan underneath the rotisserie. 
This is a uh, 19 and a half inch by uh, 11 and a half inch, three and a half inches deep, but a very large drip pan. You're going to basically, you know, be able to have enough room for your food. It's not going to, the rotisserie's not going to hit. And so, you basically, you know, if you want to ensure that you're not going to hit anything, use a super large drip pan or a super small drip pan if that's your choice. Um, but uh, these are basically your options for drip pans and how things look on the rotisserie. But this is basically the initial, you know, how you get it all set up and installed. I just have to turn it off here. This is how you get it initially set up and installed. I just wanted to kind of walk you through that. You know, and maybe since I had some of the rocky parts, you won't have them yourself. You know, you'll see where to avoid any errors or mistakes. But if you did like the video, you know, in the effort to get this shown to you, you can give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Definitely you can subscribe to the channel, and good eating.